Welcome back. Now we move to the most difficult and lengthy chapter uh, of this course. It's about weak topologies, reflexive and separable spaces, and uniformly convex spaces. Okay, so in this chapter, we will synthesize everything we learned so far in this course. Okay, this is why it's the most difficult. So there will be seven sections in this chapter. And in this video, I'm going to cover the first section, uh, which is a general construction from point set topology. Okay, it's about the smallest topology making continuous a collection of maps. Okay, here's the problem. We have a set X without any structure. So if it is already a topological space, we, dis we disregard its topological structure and we're just considering it as a set. And on the other hand, you have a collection Y sub I of, of topological spaces and a collection of maps Phi I from the set X into the topological space YI. We, so, the main interest will be when all these spaces are the same, R. Okay, this will be our main uh, application of this general construction. Okay, but it's, it applies to this more general context. So, we would like to construct a topology on the set X, as small as possible, that makes all the maps phi I continuous. Why are we interested in such a topology? As you observed in chapter zero, when we make the topology smaller, we get more compact sets and more conversion sequences. But at the same time, we, we get fewer continuous functions. So by requirement, by requiring that the phi i still be continuous, we achieve a kind of balance. So on the one hand, if this is possible, we will get more compact sets and more conversion sequences, and we don't lose continuity of these maps, okay? <clears throat> now, of course, if you put the discrete topology on X, then any con function uh, on X is continuous, but this is the biggest topology, not the smallest topology on X. Okay, how to think of this problem? So suppose that the problem is solved, and let T be such a topology. So what does it mean? In particular, if so since each phi i is continuous, then phi i, the inverse image under phi i of any open set of y i must belong to this topology. And since T is a topology, so it's stable under finite intersections, then any finite intersection of sets of the form phi i minus one over i must also belong to T. And these sets, which are finite intersections of phi i minus one for i, is actually, uh, these sets are the building blocks for the topology. Okay. So here's the construction. So we consider the collection calligraphic B of all sets that are finite intersections of sets of the form phi i minus one for i. We claim that this is a basis for a topology. What does it mean? It means two things, if you recall from chapter zero. So first condition, for any small x in the set, we can find a basis element containing the set, the point. So then second thing, if we have two elements, two basis elements, B1 and B2, and we take a point in the intersection, we must find the third base element containing x and contained in the intersection. But here, in this case, we have something stronger. The whole space, is itself a basis element because from set theory we know that the inverse image under phi i of the target space y i is the whole source space x okay so and second thing as you may easily check the intersection of two basis elements is again a basis element okay we encountered this when we defined uh, the product topology okay how to find how do you prove this is very easy so just take two elements okay so here actually you can write this as intersection over i in J1, phi i minus one for i. And the second element, intersection over i in J2 of phi i minus one for i. So when you take the intersection, you will find intersection over i, J1 union J2 
of phi i minus 1 of o i intersected with it. Okay, you write the details. Okay, so when we intersect finitely many elements of this form with, other, with another finite, with another infinite intersection of elements with the form, it's still get a finite intersection of elements of this form. So just write it. Therefore, we know that B generates a topology T0. And we have two ways of looking at this topology T0. First way, two equivalent ways, actually. So the definition is that for every, so O belong or U belongs to T0, if whenever X is in U, we can find a basis element containing X and contained in U, okay? Or, alternatively, any, any element U of T0 is a union, not necessarily finite, of elements of the basis. Okay, so, and this topology will be, will, uh, will be the required topology. I will call it T0. Okay, how do I prove that T0 uh, satisfies the requirement? I have to prove two things. Any phi i is continuous with respect to zero, to T0, and uh, for any, any topology for which each phi i is continuous must contain T0. Okay. So, the first point is easy. So if you take an open set O, we fix J, let us say, and we take an open set O of YJ, we could call it OJ, doesn't matter. Since each phi J is continuous, then phi J minus one of O is a, why does it belong to the topology? Because by definition, it's a basis element because it's just an intersection of one element, okay? So this is a basis element and therefore it belongs to T0 because as you know, T0 contains B. Now, second point, we consider an arbitrary topology, calligraphic T, for which each phi i is continuous, and you prove that it contains, contains T0. How do I prove that? I take an arbitrary element, U of T0, and prove that it's in, in T, and this is easy. As I said, U is a union of basis elements, so it's a union of elements of the form finite intersection of phi i minus one of four i, and now, since each phi i is continuous, continuous with respect to t, and o i is open in y i, then this set belongs to t. And since t is stable under finite intersections, that this element belongs to t. And therefore, any union of these elements also belongs to t. So u belongs to t. Okay, so straightforward. So any element in t0 is in t. So yes, t0 is our solution. So it's the smallest topology that makes all phi i continuous. And it calls, it's called the topology generated by phi i. <clears throat> and fortunately, as we, as we observe, there is a simple formula for uh, the elements of T0. An element, a set U belongs to T0 if and only if it can be written in this form. It's an arbitrary union of a finite intersection of elements of this form. So easy to remember. This is perfectly acceptable. We can write it in a slightly a more sophisticated way. We could write it as intersection of phi i minus 1 over i, i in J lambda, J lambda finite, and lambda is an, an arbitrary set capital L, if you like. But this is easier to understand. Okay. So we build U from these building blocks. So if you like, there's an analogy with uh, a vector space generated by a set. Okay. So the vector space generated by a set is the, the set of all elements that are linear combinations of elements of this set. So here, if you take, you can, so instead of intersection, you take multiple, so what does it mean that, um, so an element X belongs to the vector space generated by the collection, for example, E1, EN, is this can be written as summation of alpha I, EI, if you like. So here we have something very similar, but instead of intersection, we have multiplication, and instead of union, you have summation, vice versa. Okay, so 
same analogy. And we already encountered such a situation when we dealt with the product topology of on the product of topological spaces. In proposition 0 0.9, we stated that the product topology is the smallest topology on the product that makes all projections continuous. Okay, so this is an example that we already know. So the product topology is generated by the collection of projections. Now, let us uh, establish two very important results of this topology. The first one con concerns conversions for this topology. So we consider a set X and the collection of maps phi i from X to y i as above, and we equip X with the topology generated by phi i. Okay, and we consider a sequence Xn in the set, in the space X. Then Xn converges to X in this topology, if and only if all its images under phi i converges, converge to the image of X under phi i. Okay. So why this is important? Because later, for example, if you take y i equal r, it's easier to, to establish conversions in r and conversions in a topological space. So to prove that a sequence is conversion, we just look at its images under each of these maps. If all these maps converge, then the sequence converges. Okay. Now, we have two implications. One way is easy, because if xn converges to x, and since each phi i is continuous, then phi i of xn converges to phi i of x, because phi i is sequentially continuous. So continuity implies sequential continuity. Conversely, suppose that each phi i of xn converges to phi i of x. We have to prove that xn converges to x. How do I prove that? I go back to the definition. xn converges to x if for every neighborhood u of x, or every neighborhood u of x contains xn starting from a certain rank. So we consider an arbitrary neighborhood u of x and by definition of uh, the topology the set u since x is a new then there is a basis element containing x and containing u okay and this basis element is something of this form intersection over i and j j finite of phi i minus one of oi okay Okay, what does it mean that x belongs to the intersection of these sets? It means that x belongs to phi i minus 1 of y for every i in j. And by definition of the inverse image, this means that phi i of x belongs to oi. And this is true for every i in j. Okay, so now oi is an open set of yi, contains phi i of x. And since phi i of x and converge to phi i of x, then by definition of convergence in the space yi, OI will contain all the elements of the sequence phi i of x and starting from a certain rank, but that depends on i. Okay, so for every i in j, there exists an index n sub i, starting from which phi i of x n belongs to OI. Now, which means that x n belongs to phi i minus one for i. Okay, just same thing here, and therefore if I take n to be uh, bigger or equal than the maximum of these n i's, this, this is a finite number because it's the maximum of a finite collection of numbers, then xn belongs to the intersection over j of phi i minus 1, and this is contained in u, so xn is in u. So we prove that all the terms of the sequence starting from max, from this max, belong to the neighborhood u, and therefore this means that xn converges to x. Okay, next result is about how to detect continuity of a map psi from a topological space Z into our set X equipped with this uh, topology generated by phi i. Okay, so always go back to this diagram because it helps you think uh, of what's happening. So we have, uh, this is our set X and we equip it with this smallest topology 
we have a map psi from z to x and we have this collection phi i from x to y and we take the composition so the result states that psi is continuous if and only if phi i of psi is continuous for every i okay so to prove that psi is continuous we look at the composition with each of these maps exactly like we did in sequences now one way is easy because if psi is continuous and phi i is by definition continuous then the composition is continuous as well so this is easy now the converse is a little bit more interesting but very easy as well because fortunately we have this formula for how do i prove that phi is continuous we have to prove that the inverse image under psi of an open set in x is an open set in z so we take an open set in x u and we know that there is a formula for u. It can be written as a, an arbitrary union of a finite intersection of sets of this form. So when I apply psi minus 1, we know that we can interchange union and psi minus 1 and intersections and psi minus 1. So psi minus 1 of u is psi minus 1 of the union, which is the union of psi minus 1. And again, I interchange intersections with psi minus 1. And I get this. So psi minus 1 of phi i minus 1 of y. And as you know, this term is just the inverse image of phi i of psi minus 1 of y. Now, our assumption states that phi i of psi is continuous. Since oi is open, its inverse image is open, so this is open. Finite intersection of open is open. Arbitrary union of open is open. Therefore, this set is open in z. And that's it. So, we'll use this again and again. So, uh, I suggest that you watch this video several times until you understand it very well because we will build on this material later. So if you don't understand this material, you'll have difficulties in understanding the SQL. Okay, so this concludes the video and section 4.1. Thank you for your attention. And in the next section, we will apply this construction uh, to the context of norm spaces.